came up with our problem. We want it to be 2 square root of 5 minus 3a squared cube root of a squared, right? So that's our first level. Please remember your level. So that's our first level, right? So what we're going to do is take this number and expand it one more level lower. So basically, uh, take it to a level where number 2 appears like we talked about before. You can write number 4 as uh, 5 minus 1, right? So what we're going to do is break this down, take this, take this thing, take this term, and turn it into two terms. So we're going to take, you can, get, you can get the number 2 from going 5 minus 3, right? So we have 2 square root 5s, or 2 boxes, 2 whatever, 2 of anything. So we're going to go 5, 5 square root of 5 minus 3 square root 5. Okay. So 5 minus 3 is going to give us 2. So our first term, we just broke it, broke it into, or took it to one level higher, right? Now we're going to deal with this. Now, whenever you have a minus between two terms, this minus sign applies to everything after the term. If it's one term, if it's, um, and if it's a bracket there, it applies to everything after, right? If, if you've got another term here, if it's a plus or a minus, this won't apply unless there's a bracket there. But since we started off with one term with a minus in front, and we're going to expand this into two terms, we're going to have to put a bracket after this negative sign. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do is go minus square, uh, sorry, minus bracket. Now we've got 3a squared cube root of a squared, right? How are we going to write the number 3? So we've got 3a squared. Let's make that into a squared. a squared cube root of a squared plus so we already got, there's three a squareds here, three of these guys basically, these are variables, letters, right? So we got three of these guys, we already got one of them. When there is no number in front of uh, a letter, it implies there's a one there, right? So we need two more, we got three, so we need two more. Two a squared cube root of a squared, and then you can close your bracket. So we just took the answer, oops, we just took the answer, and made ourselves a problem. Now, what they would do in, uh, you know, in an exam, or if your if your teacher's giving you a question, is, you know, this could be a legitimate question. So take this off, right? And this would be, you know, solve this or simplify this. It wouldn't be a solve because there's no equal sign in the question, right? It would just say simplify this, and all you would do is combine like terms. So if they give you a question, let's say this was your question one, because really this is our simplest. You know, one of our simplest questions you could get, as long as you know you've figured out how to do the little little questions, right? Combining like terms and stuff like this. So five five square root five minus three square root five. Five minus three would be two, so you get that. So if you were going the other way around, if you're solving for this, it would have gone two square root five, and then you have a squared cube root of a squared plus 2a squared cube root of a squared, and that would be uh, 3, right? So it would be minus bracket 3a squared cube root of a squared. So what I'm going to do is close our bracket, and then since you only have one term, you don't need the brackets anymore, so you just kill the bracket. So every time we expand it to one level, uh, we go one level complicated, more complicated. What we'll do is just we'll solve it again to go back to the original level, okay? So we just got this. Now we've got to remember this. Go to another wall and take this thing and expand it one more level, okay?